So just to give you guys a little bit of context for this video, it's a little bit different to our usual style of vlogs, but we hope you enjoy it today because it's basically a little bit more of a look into, I guess, the reason we moved to the Philippines, a bit of the history of our YouTube channel. We've had quite a few new subscribers recently, so if you're new around here, hopefully it's gonna give you a little bit of an insight into that side of things. We were basically invited to appear on a podcast with our friend Kate. We'll leave the podcast link below, but we are also gonna see kind of our answers in this video, and we talk about a load of exciting things. Travels around the Philippines, when we first went traveling back in 2018. We tell some funny stories about when we first started our channel in 2014, I believe now, and we hope you enjoy it today. So if you are new around here, please hit that subscribe button, give the video a big thumbs up, grab something to eat or drink and enjoy this video with us today because it's a little bit longer than our usual content and we hope you really enjoy it today. The next clip you see will be us on Be Cool with Kate. Leave a comment below how long you've been watching the channel because I'd be interested to see. Um, some of you may already know some of these stories we're gonna tell. So leave a comment below when you first subscribed to the channel or when you first saw our videos and we hope you enjoy watching today. We're filming as well. We might put some of it in our vlog if that's okay with you. Yes, yeah, yeah? absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. Cool. I'm just gonna prep a live yeah, no, no rush at all. We are live. Cool. Hi, this is Kate Hancock, and today I have amazing guests all the way from the Philippines, Doris and Lucy. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good to Good see evening. you. Good evening. Good evening for you. Yeah. Good evening. Yes. Yeah. For our listeners all over the world, Lucy and Doris, can you introduce yourself? So we are YouTubers. We're vloggers. We make videos on YouTube. Um, we love to travel, although not so much recently. Yeah, <laughs> we used to love to travel. Yeah. Less and... so now. And um, we've got a base here in Manila in the Philippines. And um, we've been here just over a year now. Uh, so that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so guys, I need to know your story. What was your journey like to get where you are? It was kind of kind of interesting up to this point. Yeah. I would say we we made a decision back in 2018. We'd kind of... I mean, we got together in... 2013, I think. 13? 13? As a, in a, as a relationship, as yeah. a couple. It's weird because we're kind of like business partners and... A couple. A couple as well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so it's kind of, everything's together. So we decided to, we wanted to make little videos of our vacations uh, for some reason, just, yeah. just for ourselves. That was like six years ago now, Yeah. from this point. And we've been making videos as a hobby alongside our full-time jobs back in the UK for three years maybe mm -hmm. and then we said one day what if we can make this full time what if we can make this like a thing that we do as our job instead of just as a hobby uh, and the only way to try that out and see if it would actually kind of work and if we could do it would be to quit these jobs and just like go full speed ahead with our 6,000 subscribers at the time so then we booked a ticket to Asia and started traveling started daily vlogging from that point and then a few months in, things started to really pick up. Yeah. And that just kind of, yeah, leads us to where we are today, I guess. Pretty much. That's where the work started, really. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So how, what, you know, why did you pick Philippines as a home base? It was an easy decision, really, yeah. by the time that we had to make that decision, or rather chose to make that decision. Yeah, yeah. We'd, we had no home for a year, um, and it got very... Tired. We loved it, yeah. but it got very tiring um, traveling constantly from hotel to hotel to Airbnb. Yeah, one, two, three nights days, packing a suitcase, unpacking, traveling in between. It was very full on. Like, we loved it and we wouldn't change it. That was our life for a year, Yeah. Um, which is kind of crazy. I never thought we'd do that. Um, well, actually, I did. I did. <laughs> I did, <laughs> but it, it, cha it changed halfway through. We yeah. kind of decided that, wow, this is, this is kind of working out. Um, and we, we came to the Philippines, absolutely loved it. We, we were only originally going to come to the Philippines for two weeks. Yes. That was going to be it. It was going to be a short trip. <laughs> Little did we know. <laughs> and yeah, and then we decided that when we decided that we, okay, it would be cool to have some kind of base somewhere in the world. Um, First you know, choice. We could stay Easy. there, we could have a desk set up and we can edit our videos. We can go off on trips, come back, we'd have internet, we'd have yeah. a, a little bit of, you know, a home base. Yeah. And. By that point, Manila was an easy decision because we were kind of using Manila as a base anyway. In between trips elsewhere, yeah. Just in hotels as a kind of jumping point for other trips to, I don't know, Japan or Bali or something like that. All around the Philippines as well. And all around yeah. the Philippines, yeah. Alright, now bringing back the very first day you guys decided or told your family that you're going to be moving out of Asia. 
Yeah. It, it, it was, was daunting. I mean, the, the conversation, we, we knew that it would be a, a surprise. I think they knew that we loved what we did and we love making these videos in our spare time, but I don't think they maybe were expecting us to just leave the UK completely. Although we did give them a, quite a big build up. Yeah. We probably had, we probably gave them around a year's notice. Notice? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're leaving them as a job. Yeah. 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 I would say we gave them about a year to, I don't know, where we told them that's what we wanted to go and do. We had this idea and then slowly things started moving. We handed our notices in our jobs. We booked our tickets, we bought that some huge worse. rucksacks. It was yeah. worse for us telling our former uh, employee, employers, yeah, employers yeah. Uh, that we were leaving than our family, I think, because I only had to give a month notice. Yeah. So I'd worked, so, I'd worked a job for four years and then I only had to tell them in four weeks that I was leaving and that was it. Yeah, it was a shock for both of our workplaces, I think, more than our family. Because they had no build up whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, what did you guys do in the UK? What was your job? So I worked at BMW and I sold cars for, I mean, about what, two years I was doing that for, but I was with the company for three years and I did some other work at the beginning of that time. Yeah, I worked for a media company, so it was in radio advertising effectively yeah. at a radio station. So mine was totally different to now. Yours has some things you can use, but it's still very different. It was, it was the entertainment industry, yeah. I suppose. So I've learned, I've taken a few skills from that into this. Well, that makes sense. You're in the media industry, that makes yeah. sense for you to do this. Yeah. Now, wow, who's your inspiration to do all this thing? I love your do the thing. Like, tell yeah. me about the backstory. Yeah. Sure. I think there's a few people who inspired us, but I don't think we ever wanted to, we never really wanted to copy anybody. We True. never tried to do that. We, um, we took things from different people, I guess. Like, yeah. I'd say when we, when Casey Neistat was daily vlogging, we were watching his vlogs and we were like, wow, this is cool. Like, you're seeing his life every day and what he's up to around this huge city. Like, that's amazing. And at the same time, do you know Gary V? Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're, we were hugely influenced by him. So uh, in through more the work ethic, the hustle, the grind, the uh, giving stuff a go, the what ifs, and just trying things and that kind of side. So I'd say like a combination of the two. Gary made us go for it, but Casey gave us the idea to do the daily vlogging. I think that's a good, yeah. I think the two of them maybe. But the, little... the interesting thing is we started YouTube and we started vlogging before we knew who any of those people were. Yeah. We started making videos for YouTube before we watched YouTube. Yeah, we used so, YouTube as a place to upload our videos, to share on Facebook, yeah. to show our families, that kind of thing. It wasn't like we were watching all these vloggers and then we were like, we want to do that. True. It kind of became that a little bit more as we went along. Yeah. But yeah, Gary V, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I had two screens in my old office at my UK job. I'd have my work on one and Gary's videos <laughs> on another with an earphone in all day, just him talking to me all day for yeah. three years. I think he made us push like take the leap of trying it yeah and giving it a go yeah i'm glad we did yeah that's awesome now oh my god how did you get into this 387 subscriber on youtube tell me how it's crazy it's i mean a lot of work. i know that yeah, yeah. we it's... still we still have pinch me moments all the time we're so grateful and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's our channel like we yeah. we, we look at our subscriber count and our face is next to it and it's like I, I thought it could happen, like there was something in me, but I like, I'm still so surprised every time I yeah, see Yeah, we're grateful yeah. and we just want to keep going, you know, it, it makes us want to work harder when we see the bigger numbers, yes. doesn't make us want to slow down. Um, how do we get there? I think it was ve persistence and consistency really and hard work and not giving up, you know, we didn't make any money on YouTube for four years, but we that we didn't care about that we just we kept going some people might try something for a year a year is a long time to try anything new yeah. but we yeah. did it we did it for four you know i always say we, we could have given up after three years we Doing, wouldn't have known what would have happened yeah. after like it's crazy even now if someone said i've done some, i've tried something for three years and nothing's really happening i'd say well maybe try something else but i don't know for some reason we carried on we loved yeah. it so much it wasn't even that we were trying to make it work back then mm -hmm. I mean, when we decided to go to Asia and travel, we were like, okay, we could give this a shot. Let's try and make it a thing. But before that, it wasn't that we were trying to become big YouTubers. It was that we just 
We just love making videos and vlogging and it's fun. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. We just it enjoy the, it so much. The enjoyment behind it and we'd wake up to, I don't know, like 50 views on a video we uploaded the night before and we wouldn't be disheartened by that. We'd be like, cool. Imagine 50 people in a room, like that's a lot of people, yeah. like actually watching, taking the time out of their day to watch a video, or to watch our video, yeah. and I think the enjoyment for making the videos, not just uh, uploading the videos, but editing them, filming them, thinking of ideas, replying to comments, having this small community that we had at the time, actually like talking to us and interacting with us, it was so overwhelming and we loved it so much that the views didn't matter, the, the income didn't really matter, the subscriber count, like we kind of didn't look at that. We just had kind of tunnel vision yeah. for having the passion behind it. Because it, it was a, it was more of a hobby back then. We yeah. had our jobs, which was paying the bills and stuff like that. Um, so, and then and then things started growing, and then they started growing kind of rapidly. And it's just been this incline for nearly two years, two, I yeah, suppose two. now. Wow! Wow! No, I've been you know watch, watching watching the race travel blog and I have to say I love you guys humility no matter you know there's like it stays there and I think that's so endearing oh thanks thank that's you that's how you you're more relatable than than I think you I like that about you guys you're like always grateful never really acting like you know like your head gets bigger like I love yeah. the humility oh that I'm thank glad you. that comes yeah, across that's we I think that comes from just gratitude of having something we dreamt of for a, for a little while and something that we never really thought yeah. would become our reality. We don't take it for granted ever, do we? No way. And we know it's fragile. If we stop posting vlogs tomorrow, in a month we'll probably be, you know, we'll be heading towards being irrelevant. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's, we're incredibly grateful for everyone who watches us. We know we have to work hard and keep going and pushing, but we love it, so that's just not a problem. Um, humility yeah I'm glad that's that's nice to hear I think I think it comes from having a very different life before which wasn't a bad life we haven't particularly yeah, come from any hardship or anything life. like that we had a great upbringing both of us uh, we you know we had jobs we had an apartment we had some disposable income to enjoy our life yeah um, but we it was just very stable I guess we just knew that we wanted to try something for ourselves uh, we knew we kind of wanted to try and work for ourselves we both disliked having a boss, having people telling us what to do. Um, and we had the opportunity to try it. We would save some money and we had the opportunity to try it. That's awesome. Now, who's the most creative between the two of you? <sighs> we, have, we, we got asked this question a few times about like who edits what part or who does yeah, that. Like, people always wonder that. It's so I would interesting. Say, I would say even outside of the vlogs, we're both creative in different ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you're very musically gifted. Yes, I play guitar and piano and sing and write songs yeah. and stuff like that. And I don't do that. But Lucy is a great painter. Yeah. She's a great dancer. You might have seen her on TikTok. <laughs> I see it so perfect. She's <laughs> blowing up on TikTok. I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we both bring different things to the table. I think in the vlogs, uh, our editing style is slightly different, but I don't think people know who's editing when they watch a vlog because we might just take it in turns with editing a video. So. Some days you'll get one edited by myself or by George, but no yeah. one ever knows, so it's quite funny. Like It might look slightly different in the editing style or the music choices or the transitions and some of the cinematics and things, but I think we've got a similar level of creativity, yeah. I'd say. And the vlogs have changed a lot recently, since quarantine, yeah. you know, since For March. Sure. We've stripped back a lot of the cinematics because there's nothing, you know. What, what, <laughs> we, not much you can do. <laughs> there's not much we can do. We, we filmed 80 something daily videos in a row just in our apartment without yeah. leaving. For some reason, the people loved it. The views were higher than ever. We've had a record three months on YouTube. Yeah, I don't know how we had things to say about yeah. anything for 81 days but, in one place. Wow. So they've changed recently, but yeah, creativity. We're both creative, but in different ways. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. And who's the best copywriter? Um, the neither of us, neither of us. Me. The t titling of vlogs <laughs> is... It's so funny. It's like, I imagine it to be like if you're an editor of a newspaper and you have to write that one headline per day. To get people to buy your paper. That you hope people are going to buy that newspaper yeah. because it grabs their attention. Um, clickbait's a big thing on YouTube. Um, we try not to do that. We, we, we have no problem with leaving a little bit of mystery in the title. Yeah. Because I, I don't think there's anything wrong with creating a little bit of excitement um, and people thinking, oh, I wonder what that is. 99% nine, nine, of our comments 
if we do a bit more of a mysterious title, um, people don't mind. People don't mind. They they want to click on the video. They watch us because they want to watch us. Yeah. Um, and we never. I would say we never clickbait too heavily. Not that too, wasn't the question. Not like, but not like a unrealistic when it's like, oh my god, this has happened, but it literally didn't happen. Yeah. And but, we we don't spend too much time on it. It's something yeah. we ha we do every day. Um, and we do carefully think about our titling and stuff like that. But copywriting in general. I mean, our Instagram captions, I put no thought into it whatsoever, really. <laughs> I just, whatever I've got on my mind at the time, yeah. it just comes out. I'm not too fussy or particular on that. I would, I would so rather try and be a little bit more real, real. and raw. I think people Relatable respond- Relatable as well. I think people, yeah. people respond to that more these days. I think, I think five years ago, there was a lot, of, a lot more curated Good, yeah. Instagram posts captions uh what people people were very narrow on what they would share online and they'd show the very best of themselves and they they're a lot of flexing online mm. or i did this or i achieved that um but we'll, we'll talk about a lot of different things in our videos and the same goes on all social media platforms really yeah now how did you come up with the name the juicy blog well nice story. so it was george's younger sister Jasmine we'd been together for like three weeks or something like back in the day yeah and she was young at the time she was what like 10 or 11 I don't know or was she like 13 no, maybe she was like oil. she might have been 12 or yeah, something. yeah and she went to like a, a fair thing at her school and she bought this I think she won like a tiny little was it a cheetah or a jaguar like it's a tiny teddy. tiny like soft toy soft toy and yeah. she was like oh I, I got this I'm, I, I'm gonna give it to you guys as your little mascot uh, for like us being a couple like she was quite excited that her older brother had got a new girlfriend and it was I was kind of new She was like she was trying scene. to trying to make friends with Lucy. She was like got you guys a present Yeah, and she said we said okay. What was it gonna be called? And she was like juicy and we were like oh, oh Okay, strange name for what, a teddy. Why is it called juicy? She was like well obviously George and Lucy and we were like ah <laughs> Love it and then when it was time to think of a YouTube name. Yeah, yeah, yeah When it was time to think of a YouTube name We had all these ideas back and forth and this juicy kept coming up and we were like Some people might realize that it's George and Lucy some people might be like juicy. What does that mean? Like it's kind of intriguing I guess yeah. isn't it? a lot of people don't know that's where it kind of came from yeah. but it's just our names really yeah, yeah, yeah. and it just stuck Yeah it's nice and short to say as well, I think. It's great. We get we get shouted that in the street. People don't shout. Juicy. Oh, some people shout George or Lucy, but some people just shout Juicy or Juicy Vlog. <laughs> nice and snappy. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really cute story. <laughs> yeah. Now, how do they stay? I know it's hard traveling from one place to another. How do they stay like burnout? Did you guys went through? That? Oh yeah, yeah, several times. We so, don't. We I'd say with. We kind of were in denial at one point, I'd say. Yeah. As dramatic as that sounds, we had done traveling, like you said, out of a, like one bag, a backpack for one whole year. And the day, we were daily vlogging, the video was doing incredibly well. We were growing subscribers. We had like, I don't know, like 70,000 subscribers in one month at one point. And it was like, it was going crazy and things were kicking off. So because it was so exciting and there was so much, what's the word when you're- We took no breaks. Yeah, so we were so We were so amazed and, in or adrenaline that's the, the adrenaline of, yeah. of what yeah. was happening to get addicted. yeah it, exactly. it was it was complete yeah. addiction we may felt I felt oh we're a bit tired today but it'd be like what the people want a video we want to make a video we're going to upload a video so we push through and we're traveling travel travel takes it out of you as it is it the long boats at the airport waiting times and stuff but daily vlogging and editing on top of that and trying to find internet places to upload it was it was tough i guess yeah it but, was full on but because it was so exciting, we didn't really feel the tired part as much. Because the more exciting bit was bigger. We, we didn't acknowledge it. We we would literally work constantly all day. We'd get up early, we'd start filming, we'd film the whole day. In between that we'd be doing emails, we'd we'd have to edit the previous day's vlog, schedule it, yeah. upload it. Doing something exciting in the day because yeah. we wanted to have something fun to vlog as well. Yeah. And um, so it's just kind of this weird like Mismatch. And all the all the other content around it, Instagram posts, taking photos, and we'd film, stories. We'd film the one day and edit it that next evening, so it was like a one day turnaround thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say it wasn't until maybe when we went back to the UK. Oh no, I think around last July time we were on our way back to the UK. I think we did a stop in Dubai, 
and we both kind of woke up one morning yeah. and we said we've both had a lot of sleep like we're we're fine on the sleep part but we both feel exhausted completely and drained kind of ill in a way like yeah kind of, um, we didn't feel good like we've had enough sleep but we're still tired that kind of thing and we were both like i remember we googled like how do you know you've got burnout and how to help with burnout and then we were reading these things and we were like, yeah, I think this is us. Yeah, because we hadn't had that before. You know, in our, yeah. our old jobs, it was a nine to five. Uh, we could finish at five o'clock, walk out the door and you go home and you chill, you relax, you watch Netflix or whatever. But it was, imagine your, I don't know what hobbies you might have or anyone listening or watching might have, but imagine your, the hobby you love the most. Um, imagine doing it for years and then you suddenly have a lot of people watching you do it and they're loving it. Say you're a singer or a rapper or a something like that a guitar player and suddenly everyone's buying your music everyone's listening to your song yeah. everyone wants to know everything about you you're not um, going to stop are you you want to put out more songs you, you're not going to slow for us, down you wanna, we wanted to put out more videos we wanted to keep going it was incredibly exciting and yeah we definitely neglected ourselves i would say yeah a little bit you know um uh, we, we've changed that now we've changed that now we're still adapting you know it's always changing we even said the other day oh we could do a little little bit of a change up or a break or a day off yeah. um, but we just kind of listen to ourselves and do what we need to do when, th- whenever it's necessary now really. I think one of the reasons why we went so hard and we still do a lot of the time is because when we were pushing at our hardest point the first kind of year if we hadn't put, given it our all there was a chance that it might not work so I think yeah, because true. it was if, if you're working for someone else and you don't put your complete like I always say like I think Gary said it before your people that you employ aren't going to care as much about your business as you are because it's your business it's your baby it's what you've cre- created and what you want to make work so if we it's basically the more work we put in the more we get out of it and if we don't put the work in then there's a chance that if we miss this upload oh that could have been the one that went viral it yeah. could have been that so it was just like addictive like you said it was just head on yeah. definitely we didn't want to go back to i mean it wouldn't have been you know it's still a nice life but we we didn't want to go back to a, the life we had when we yeah. started making tracks on a different life for ourselves gotcha so yeah so you're scared of losing that momentum that yeah. you were working on yeah. and, that, and that is still true to this day i would say we work just as hard but in a different way true, um, true. we're doing a lot of different things now as well and i think the momentum thing is so key. I think with any YouTuber or vlog or any social media content creator, you you don't you don't want to disappear and you don't want to feel irrelevant, not for your own self worth or anything like that, but purely on the front of you enjoy doing it and you want the audience to enjoy it and you just want to keep the audience happy and keep yourself happy. Most importantly, yeah, and there's a lot of factor that you have to consider. Like you don't want to lose that algorithm because it's tricky; it changes all the time. It does, the, but the thing is, no one knows anything about algorithms, really. Yeah, you it's know, a funny one, isn't it? We, people, people say to us, "Should I daily vlog? I want to start a YouTube channel. Should I upload every day? Is that how you did it? Is that what works?" And all we can say is, we don't know. There's, Maybe there's people who upload once a month who have incredibly successful channels once a week. Um, it just depends. I think there was a there was a period in time where the audience really loved the, and still now, loved the daily uploads and a, a rolling story. Yeah. It was like a soap opera or a, a series. It was like a story. Come that, back every day for what they got up to next. Yeah, see what we're doing tomorrow. Join yeah. us tomorrow, see what we get up to. And they're still like, I mean, we pretty much daily still, we're, aren't we're, we? We pretty much upload every day. But now I think we, we missed two days in August. So That's we're true. saying it as though it's the past, but it's still very much yeah. happening. But we do it slightly differently now. We yeah. might film two videos in one day yeah. and then not film the next day, but then we're doing something else on that day. You know, so it's changed up a little bit. But uh, algorithms, yeah, I, I don't know. I, for me, no, for us, it's just head down, make your content. Don't worry about the algorithms. Uh, you know, the, the time you spend complaining about algorithms, you could be making a video. Or, you know what I mean? Because you can't control it. We spend very little time on things that we can't control we'd rather spend time on things we can control. Yeah. Now tell me, what did you learn about yourself while doing this journey? Ooh. Good question. Wow. I think we learned that, I mean, for me, I learned that, wow, we can actually, we can actually do this. This is a thing. YouTube can be a lifestyle, you know, yeah. we, cause, Growing up in a smallish town, you grow up with the same 
kind of friends, you grow up with a small group of people around you. Uh, a lot of people do the same thing, you go to college, some might go to university, and then you apply for a job, and you hope to get a job at a company that you kind of like. And that's kind of a set structure in society. Um, and I think it was very cool for us to see that, wow, there is something else. There is, yeah. if you want it, and if you do the right things and you know, have all these dynamics come together, you, there is a whole different world out there. Our life is so different. We're not living a small town life in the UK anymore. And I think we've also gained a huge amount of perspective from traveling. I know it's very cliche to say when you travel, you see all these things and you, you change your mindset, but it really does because you see things and you think when people are moaning about tiny little things at home and then you're traveling through a tiny town in the middle of Cambodia and people are all on the streets and this awful history this country's had and then you, you kind of, it really goes yeah. into your mind and you just think, come on, just be grateful, think about what you have, how lucky you are to have been born into this kind of lifestyle and this privilege. Yeah, fully. It really grounds you and it really makes you so, so grateful for everything around you. And that's why we always try and stay like that. We wake up every day so happy and grateful that we can do this and this yeah. is our life. Um, and it kind of makes you, sometimes you're cautious of what you say sometimes because you know a lot yeah. of people, including your audience, a lot of people are living different lives and you don't want to come across in a certain way sometimes maybe. Um, but if I think as long as you stay grounded and stay grateful for what you've got and work hard for what you've got and you know you're a good person then, then I think that's okay. Love it. Now knowing what you know now, what would you guys do differently? Nothing. I wouldn't want to know. Yeah, I, I don't would, like that because it, it scares it, me. If something was slightly different it might not have had the same yeah, outcome. I mean we, we always said we could try, there would have been maybe ways we could have tried to grow quicker or something with True. titles or done more food videos or certain things that you know work sometimes on YouTube but we were just filming the story of our lives and that's what we're still doing. I wouldn't want to I think if you change get, it. If you get like a, I don't know, a huge shout out from a huge YouTuber with millions and millions of subscribers, you get a, a, fa a few, quite a few thousand probably. Depends, but yeah. these people probably don't care about you, they just care about the person that's told you to subscribe to them, if that makes sense. So I think growing more organically and growing an audience that like you for you, not because you've jumped off the back of someone else, yeah. would you say is I better. mean some some people have had success like that where yeah. they've had a Yeah of course a help up from a bigger creator. Of course. And we'd love to help smaller creators as well. Yeah. Than us. Obviously we're not there's you know, great you can't ever think that you're at a certain place because there's always someone above you there's oh, yeah. always someone below you so Definitely. that's why we just said we just keep our heads down we do our thing but um yeah you're so right i think years ago a dream of ours would be to have a shout out from a big youtuber Casey nice that, let's that say. Yeah, yeah you take it but now i'd say no don't do that don't do that um i'm glad i'm glad how everything has happened and how it's happening yeah because that is a surface like they're not really your community they're exactly not Boring. Some no, te ten per ten percent might stick, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know, yeah, it's great. It's great feeling to do it kind of on your own. I love it. Now, when did you guys learn this storytelling? You guys are both great storytellers. Really? Great. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think, think we're both quite chatty and sociable people. Like we can start a conversation with anyone, any stranger. We can just chat. I just think it's just I don't know maybe off if they give been brought up. yeah but if they give it back maybe I think we're like talking to you is great it's fun um, because you're engaging you're asking really good questions uh, it's a back and forth thing yeah I think storytelling because we're talking to like a camera we're talking to that True. most of the time maybe that's what so, it is <laughs> I don't know you feel like you, but I never feel like I'm on my own. I do genuinely feel oh, like I'm I, talking to people. Didn't I say on the vlog the other day I had a bit of a freak out moment because I looked around and George was like editing or something with headphones in and I was literally like looking into a piece of glass and I was talking to it. And normally I don't think about this and I was suddenly like, huh, there's no one here right now. I'm this is like an object and I'm really, really talking to them, getting quite deep and talking about something and laughing at myself to them. Yeah. Uh, and then I was like, Obviously, I'm talking to the audience, but there's this whole editing process before, so it's so it's kind of weird, isn't it? It yeah. is a bit bizarre, but I guess talking on the vlogs and I don't know, we've done my interviews in the past and stuff. 
probably oh, helps we, with that. We just enjoy it. If, yeah. if, the per if the situation's right and the person's right and you it's know with, with the vlogs we're talking to our community, we're talking to our audience who know us. They know like that I got a new t-shirt two days ago. They know what Lucy cooked for dinner last night. It's, it's a very yeah, personal, it's a very personal close relationship, even though it's could be a hundred thousand people watching. Yeah. It's amazing how you guys built this strong community and that's how you get so successful. They know you, they know you're in and out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And definitely. I think people have to be careful if they're starting what they choose to share and what they choose to not share. Cause obviously we, we deal with, we get not much, but we get hate comments, yeah. we get strange messages, we get, you know, insults, whatever. Um, but I think to deal with that, we, it's just the heads down approach. I keep saying that today. And think about, uh, I guess, have more sympathy for the person that's leaving the hate comments and what's going on in their mind and the reason they're being mean online. Like, I just totally like, don't get it. I think so, so, someone's opinion of us who we don't even know is not, it's nothing to do with us. It, that's yeah. fine, you know, it's not gonna affect us. Absolutely, yeah. I think what I do with that is sometimes I just don't read it up. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. it's a good that's strategy. Like, next. It's a good yeah. strategy, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is the worst day of George and Lucy traveling? Tell me about the worst day traveling. I think Ooh, we're thinking the same thing. The stranded one. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was the worst like on paper, but I guess it turned out quite cool, really. Yeah. Go but ahead. Technically, okay. So I'll try and make it a bit shorter because I do ramble on with stories sometimes. So we were in Cambodia on an island called Koh Rong, and it was a tiny island, not that many people on there. There was a little strip of beach with some restaurants and a couple of little. Uh, they weren't really hotels. They're more like hostels, guest houses kind of thing. Yeah. Beautiful beach, really nice. We went on this trip, a day trip. Uh, we were staying on, I'll use my phone, so we are staying here on the island, on a hotel, and we get picked up from this part of the island. So we travelled round to here in the morning on a boat, we did this amazing boat trip, and it was like beautiful, but then halfway through the day the guy that's running the tour said, so actually the winds are too strong, we can't even try to go back round to the other side of the island, like it's crazy winds, the waves are insane. Um, and as you said, it was like something from a film, it all got a bit dark, the rain kind of came Started down. Started raining, the clouds went grey. And we were stuck on this little beach, and with this boat, you're looking out at our boat, and it's, I'm not exaggerating, it's like going crazy in these huge waves. We've got our huge camera, and all of our gear with us, and we're thinking, how are we going to get back onto this boat? We've got to swim to this boat in these choppy waves. So we're like holding the camera above our heads, like kind of drowning under, not drowning, I'm being dramatic, but like our faces are under the water and we're like trying to keep up with these waves. We get back on the boat, we make it back to the main kind of strip area and he says there's no chance you're getting back tonight yeah. to your hotel where our, lap, our expensive laptops are, all of our gear, all of our uh, clothes, our toothbrushes, like everything. So we're like, okay. And that was a collaboration with that hotel that we were staying with. Yeah. So we had, uh, you know, obligations to shoot videos yeah. there and make content yeah, yeah, yeah. and take photos. And they, these two people that are staying there just didn't return that night. The hotel are probably thinking, so we disappeared. where are they? My phone had got no battery left. We didn't have any Wi-Fi. We didn't have any chargers. Like it was kind of scary because it was A like bit, darkness. Yeah. And it we, was... we were new to Asia. We were new to traveling. We were yeah. week, uh, six weeks in at this point. Maybe like four or five Maybe. weeks. Like it was quite early on. And um, how did it get resolved? So we, we stayed overnight in this little, uh, tiny little random tiny guest two dollars a night or something it was super cheap sand all over the floor mosquitoes it was kind of crazy and we yeah woke up in the morning and they said we woke up about 6 a.m and they said you've got two choices you can try and hike through the jungle but it's very treacherous it's not a path there's like cliffs that you've got to abseil down uh, or if the wind's better you can try and convince someone to take a boat round just f f find a guy that owns a boat and just ask him to take you back yeah which we did so we found someone that did that and yeah managed to get back. back but it was like something from some like shipwrecked movie we like he dropped us quite far down on the beach we're walking back to this hotel like looking awful no shower like we're like we're here we're is back. breakfast still open <laughs> yeah we managed to make breakfast i think yeah sorry for the long story how many hours with that ordeal uh, I would say 24? 24 hours, yeah. I would say overall, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. probably. <laughs> wow, well definitely travel teach you resilience for sure. True, It Very does, true. it does. We've done a lot of long bus rides and yeah. flight, flight after flight after flight. Uncomfortable situations and it, it keeps you, uh, 
I think advice for anyone that says, oh, I'm coming to Asia, like, have you got any advice? Is just stay flexible because you don't know what's going to happen. You, you don't want to go somewhere and say, there's 10 points I want to see. I want to sightsee and see the 10 top points because you won't. Things will change. You'll miss a bus. You'll really enjoy that place and stay there longer. So just stay flexible, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine you guys living in the UK and you're traveling in Asia where everything is so disorganized and there's no such thing yeah. as being on time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which, which we also love. That's one thing we love about the Philippines as well. Everyone is so laid back. So laid back. Um, you know, it kind of suits us that people aren't too stressy mm. and it's very, very, very different to England. Yeah. But we really like the, the, the way of life here, I think, and the pace of life. Wow, that's amazing to hear. Now, it's amazing how at this time during the quarantine, that was the best, like you said, views of videos. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of crazy for it's... us. Because it's like the, the most raw personal content, as in talking about more on the vlogs, I suppose. Yeah, we could only but talk the least about travel content. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's, no, there's, been, there's been no travel for months. No. Um, so we were just very, very happy and pleased that the audience wanted to still join us and come along with us. Yeah, definitely. And new people, we had 23,000 subscribers in one month during yeah. that time. And other months were around okay. 17 to 20,000 yeah. subscri new subscribers each month. Yeah. And that's still similar, I think. Uh, it's just great that new people are joining the channel and wanting to see what we're up to yeah. and stuff like that. And it just makes us want to keep going. That's amazing. Now, how do you guys deal with traveling where you guys will be stuck everywhere for taking photos. <laughs> we, have you guys been like behind with your like flight because of that? How do you guys handle uh, that? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's happened a few times where we really need to get somewhere or We want to always be polite but, and we never want to yeah. say no to a photo, but sometimes it's like, sorry, really quickly, quickly, we need to go, we need to go. Yeah, but it's always nice when yeah. people spend the time to come and say hi. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I mean, it's different now because like all the selfies are distant and stuff yeah, like that. True. But, yeah. uh, but it's, kind of smiling through a mask. It's but. one of the nicest <laughs> feelings when you meet someone who's genuinely excited to see you because they yeah. love your videos yeah. and they love what you're doing. So it's, it's a really, really nice feeling. Wow. Now, what is the best compliment you guys have, like a message from your community wow. that really makes you inspired? Ah, uh, interesting. What do you think? I think like when, one that stands out or just generally When people like, say that we're real and when people say that we're funny and when people say that we're relatable relatable and um nice people yeah all, all the stuff that you want to hear things. in normal life i think more so that than complimenting like the actual like cinematics or something I mean, that any compliments obviously lovely but yeah if people I say that editing was great that's really nice when it's something personal to our personalities it's like that wow that's actually really kind digs a little bit deeper yeah yeah i think that's the main People always like your hair as well. Yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of comments on your hair. Well, yeah, now that it's getting a, a bit longer. That's a but... different story. Well, everyone's obsessed about your British accent. I know. <laughs> that too. Oh, wow. We get, we get a lot of comments so about, many. about the accent. Sometimes and... I'll say a certain word and there'll be loads of people commenting the timestamp. And I'm like, why are people commenting this? Like, did I say something wrong? And it's like, no, no, we just like hearing you over and over again. Yeah. Saying we sound like Harry Potter, but... <laughs> There we go. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. You know, I think, like, instantly, even my podcast, like, intro, outro, I yeah. heard an English accent. Because really? Because cool. your brand, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, to us, it's just normal. Yeah. It's just how it's we so speak. True. Yeah. And the funny thing is, traveling opened up us opened us up to that as well, because... We didn't know that people liked the British accent. We had no idea, no. you know. We, we, everyone sounds like us back home. Yeah, everyone sounds right? like us at home. Yeah. That's what we'd grown up with for 25 years. 20 years if you're 23 younger <laughs> um, and yeah it was normal to us but now it's so in, uh, even when we were tr making videos trying food in certain places for the first time yeah it was cool for us because we were we wanted to try the food of course wherever we are we love experiencing culture and food and things but we were kind of like wow so many people want to see us try it why is that yeah and, and then we and then recently we found ourselves watching other f foreign people to the UK trying British food, trying yeah. fish and chips, shepherd's pie. I, I love it. A full it's English so breakfast. And now we we totally get it. Like yeah. we want to see what oh how will they react to that yeah. sausage roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will they like it? What do they think of that? So yeah. it, we totally get it now. Um I think travelling opens you up to things like that. Definitely. Yeah. 
Now, how's your family seeing you guys? What you know, guys are now. What 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 do they say? Now? Uh, they they miss us. Yeah. First of all, we normally go home maybe twice a year, so Christmas mm -hmm. and then like a middle of the year English summer. Um, so we should have been home. We were gonna go home around around June for yeah. like I don't know a month or six weeks or something. Yeah. Obviously couldn't, yeah. obviously can't because of quarantine. So and they're def we're definitely missing them, they're definitely missing us. But I think overall they're very proud of us. They yeah. find it very cool. I mean, it's unlike anyone else in our families, our jobs, I guess. Yeah, it's very they? different. It's very yeah. different. Um, I, th I think our parents are proud yeah. and they're happy that we made something successful and, and that, that we're, we're happy. enjoying life. What more would you want for your kids, I suppose? We don't know yet. But... Um, I suppose they're yeah they're just happy for us and they miss us I think that's it. How are you guys handling this quarantine? Um, Is it difficult or filming a lot of videos. Filming a lot. <laughs> that honestly has it's been so good. It's to kept have. us very uh, same. It's yeah it's given us something to do every day. Yeah. Making videos, just doing what we were doing anyway, but in a different way. We've gone through all the phases of quarantine though. The like crazy amounts of exercise. The um, drinking alcohol part, the, all the different types of, I feel like there's all over Twitter and stuff. stereotypes. Yeah, exactly. I feel yeah. like we've gone through a fair few of we've them. We've done it all. We've yeah. had ups and downs. Yeah. You know, we've, I think like everyone. We've watched a ton of Netflix. Yeah. We've watched a lot of TV. Uh, we've played video games. We've, yeah. done, we've done a lot of things that we haven't done for the last two or three years. And maybe so it's a good thing to slow us down a bit. Yeah, it's been maybe. quite nice. We feel like yeah. we were forced to take slow. a breather slightly. Yeah. Although not even in terms of uploads, because I would say we've uploaded the same amount of videos, but I would say a breather in terms of actually traveling, going to do something every single day, day, -day moving stuff. around, exhausting ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we've just we've just adapted to what's going on. That's awesome. Now, who is the most interesting person you've met so far? Well, in the movie. Wow. Other than you. <laughs> um, interesting we've person. Got one person. We've met a lot of people. We've met mayors and um, celebrities. celebrities, some celeb people have become friends and um, interesting most person. interesting person, probably Andy Smith actually, <laughs> that man, that guy's a mystery, <laughs> he's the most Still mysterious to this man, day. do you know him, you know, do you know Andy Smith? It's such a thing, need to explain who he yeah. is. Uh, do you know Diana Zubiri, an actress in the Philippines? I think so. Yeah, it's her I husband. Yeah. And he's a great, great friend of ours, but he's a great guy. I like him a lot. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. Always off to meetings, always wearing a suit. Um, Diane's, he loves... Diane's amazing. She's we great. Have, we had her on our podcast last year? Yeah. Was that last year? Yeah. Wow. Actually, yeah, that's a great story. Um, and she was explaining that she came, I've forgotten the word, in Tagalog. She really opened up on our podcast. Um, and we asked her before, obviously, if it's okay, if she wants to talk about it. That, but she came from a... She's a been a very successful actress here yeah and she from a very young age as well yeah and she got into it but from a from a life almost pretty much on the streets and eating eating food from leftover garbage and things yeah. like that there's a tagalog word and that I've you're trying to remember forgotten it. but yeah um, she explained it to us and from that to where she is now uh it's just incredible yeah there was nothing handed to her she went out and did it all on our own back so yeah yeah inspiring those two are great and they've become good friends of ours that's wonderful. Now, what do you think of the Philippine culture? Oh, we love it. We love it. We, I feel like we know the culture more than our own now, genuinely. <laughs> Probably. Like, I never thought I'd know so much about another country that's not the UK. I think we've travelled more with the Philippines than we've travelled England. Oh, easily. Yeah. Easily. Um, we, it's just so great. I think, what's the three, we always say there's three things that really stand out. The friendliness of the people. No, I mean, as the part of the culture, what's in inside of people here. All oh, right. So, okay. like, food, family, and love are the three things yeah. that really stand out to us here. Um, so, people are like, like, food is such a bonding thing, and like having huge, like, boodle fights and things, and big buffets, and people like bond over food. Um, family is huge here. People are, like, I very think family there's focused, different ways of doing things here in the UK, and it's just yeah. really nice. Um, and then also like love, everyone is a, like loves love here, don't they? Yeah. And it's very open. And people and aren't ashamed to um, be romantic yeah. and be... Um, all the love songs on karaoke and things. Yeah, all the love, <laughs> yeah, exactly, It's exactly. just so nice to see, like, I feel like in the UK people sometimes people are more shy. People suppress that side of them And it's bit. embarrassing to be 
like a too uh, too romantic too maybe gushy, gushy or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we love it, and yeah. people are very friendly here. People are incredibly friendly to us when we meet them. Even just interactions day to day with people in stores yeah. and yeah. restaurants, coffee shops. Just so nice. People are people are just nice. Um, and we've seen a lot of different cultures around the Philippines, all kind of different levels of it. And yeah, it's so interesting to see any any country is interesting to see a culture. But I think the Philippines is so diverse. But then you see similarities everywhere you go, mm -hmm. which are the kind of things Lucy was saying. That's awesome. Now, would you guys ever consider of doing a movie or modeling? This is something that you guys have <laughs> Yeah, or definitely. Yeah, it'd be kind of crazy doing like a movie because. We're so used to being the our directors, our producers, our editors for ourselves. So like True. someone saying, do that, do that. I think it would be a bit weird. It'd be weird for us to I, adapt to yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know if I could act. I think I'm a bad actress. I don't think I, I could be know. an actor, but I'd love to. I'd love to be a part of a show of some sort. Or yeah, yeah we're up, we're definitely open to opportunities like that. Modeling, I don't know. You know, I'm. You could be a model. We can't. We can't try and be anyone who isn't ourselves. So <laughs> if they want a uh, six foot two. Uh, you know, guy with Curly like head, brown head. a beard that doesn't properly grow here, <laughs> then that's fine. But uh, yeah, you know, we yeah, we're, open, we're open to funny new new things, definitely. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's a crazy story because uh, I met Lucy through Airbnb. You guys are I know, yeah. big fan of your place. In yeah, Camden. we love it. When are you guys coming back? Oh, as soon as possible. When we can. As soon as we can. Yeah, we'd yeah. love to come back. Awesome. Place. We miss we miss that kind of thing. We loved especially going to your place. We loved it because we could oh. we could wake up at six a.m. here. We could uh, get a grab to the airport with small amount of traffic at that time in the morning. Uh, get a short flight to Camagin and be by the pool before midday at Bintana uh, at eleven a.m. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's still the morning. We'd be there yeah. in like an island paradise. <laughs> So yeah, as soon as as soon as we can, we'd love to come back. And thank you for creating that amazing video, by the way. I yeah. showed it to the American Filipino American community. They loved it. Oh, really? Great. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, we want to. Yeah. We, we actually want to come to the U.S. That was one of our plans yeah, for this year. We were gonna we were gonna do a few U.S. trips. Uh, we wanted to go to New York and L.A. Maybe maybe on separate trips, but maybe That's next. Maybe next year so or the year after. In yeah, County. yeah definitely. for sure. Definitely. That'd, definitely. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys have to go to Utah. I think Utah. Really? Oh, cool. Cool. Okay, cool. Oh, cool. Amazing. We'll check it out yeah. when we nice. can. Right. Now, what's your end goal? What's your big, hairy, audacious goal? I, I wouldn't say there was an end goal. I would say that we love we love the process of what we do. If, there, if there's an end, then that then when you're at the end goal that you made you'll be like oh but well, i want that now the, i think yeah. goals are just moving all the time goal yeah um but for us i think generically speaking is happiness and just continue to be happy every day waking up with freedom to do what we want to do that makes us happy exactly and we have some other more uh real goals, practical yeah. goals uh that we want to achieve but but really it's just keep going, keep adapting, keep changing, keep evolving, follow happiness, follow what you want to do mm -hmm. um, or what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, end goal. I think if you also, a lot of people work for an end goal and then it suggests that they don't enjoy trying to get there. They're always working for something. Yeah. They're, they're waiting for something. Should enjoy the process. Or they're, they're trying to do something they don't enjoy now because they think that when they get to this end goal, they'll be happy. But I think then you just, you're just wasting time a lot, a lot of the time. And you know, there's so many different scenarios for so many different people, but for us, we'd way rather enjoy the day to day. And if we get, if a byproduct of that is achieving some of our personal goals and along the way, then that's, that's great. But we just want to enjoy, enjoy every day. I love it. Now, how do you want to be remembered? Which one of you? Oh, um, I don't think I've ever been asked that. I think that's the first time. <laughs> as someone who, as someone who made a lot of people smile yeah. or, or laugh, brought happiness in some way. Nothing, nothing too. We. I don't think I want. I don't need to be known as like about uh, physical like um, values of like money and things like that. I think more. Someone who left happiness. Left a place or a person more positive than before they found yeah. us. Yeah. I would say something like that. Um, I think. Oh, that's a really good question. It I is, love that yeah. question. I've never been asked that. Uh, yeah, just, just a just a positive impact. Yeah. Positive impact. 
my god guys thank you for sharing your story where can they find you you're What's welcome um we are on youtube just put in the juicy vlog we're on facebook or on instagram we have a podcast on spotify um we're everywhere lucy's on tiktok at the juicy vlog go and check you out the dancers sometimes. occasionally i'll make a cameo appearance yeah. <laughs> um yeah we're everywhere so if you like seeing what random people are up to in a random life in a random apartment in manila then come along <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Like, Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's great to finally actually kind of see you. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, hopefully one day we'll see each other and come again. Definitely. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Good. When's the podcast out? It will probably be out by next week. Cool. Next week. Perfect. Cool. Let us know and then we'll, yeah. share, we'll share it as well. Yes, and we were number three in the Philippines for entrepreneurs. Wow. Amazing. Congratulations. Congrats. That's awesome. Amazing. Really, really cool. Really it cool. Is, like what you guys do, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's yeah. Easy. It's a lot of work. Definitely. Awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you guys and thank you so much for being here. No, thank, thank you. you. It's great. Good to speak to you. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Bye. That is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Like I said at the start, please give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We're considering actually bringing our podcast back, but just George and I, let us know down below if that's something you'd like to listen to. We just do it probably as the audio form and upload it to Spotify. So let us know if that's something you'd enjoy listening to. We can talk about topics and things on our minds. But yeah, thank you for watching today. If you watched to the end, let me know. Comment below, say I'm here until the end. That'd be really awesome because I know it's a little bit longer than usual. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and we'll see you very soon in another Daily Juice. Bye guys.